Hi, my name's Ben, I'm a UK-based mountain leader, and today we're talking about reading the weather. So we're going to be looking at the synoptic chart today. So you've all seen the dude on the TV reading the weather forecast, and he's usually looking at this crazy looking chart with all these symbols on it. He talks about weather fronts and he talks about if it's going to be raining, if it's going to be clear, if it's going to be sunny and he seems to be able to predict, predict that through looking at these crazy symbols. So I thought we would unpack that chart and give you guys the ability to go on there without having to wait for the weather to come on and, and read it. The synoptic chart is a map. Above the map of the landmass is some like swirly lines. They look like contours on a map. Uh, we call these isobars. Essentially what the isobar is doing is it's showing you one continuous loop of pressure. The isobars have numbers on and these numbers are called the millibars of pressure and they go up in four. So each isobar has its own number. It's a bit like the contours of a map. So on the contours of a map, if you're looking at an ordnance survey map, they go up in 10 meters. So you look at um, a very flat piece of land on a map and what you see is the contours are quite far apart and but they still remain in 10 meters. As the ground gets steeper, the contours come closer together. The steeper gro the ground, the closer the contours. However, they still remain 10 meters apart. It's just showing that the ground's getting steeper. On the synoptic chart, the, the contours, the isobars do the same thing. So when the pressure's high, the atmospheric pressure's pushing down onto the earth, the contours, the isobars are further apart. When the pressure is, is getting lower and lower, they get steeper and the contours get closer together. The low pressure means that there's less density in the air. High pressure means there's more pressure pushing down in the air. As we see the, the low pressure coming in, those isobars start to look a lot more steep. They become closer together on the map. When you see that, that's wind. So the closer together the isobars are, the windier it's gonna be. When you're looking to go out to the mountains, for example, um, if you see that the isobars over the UK are very close together, um, it's gonna be real windy. So you wanna be very careful because the wind is one of the biggest things that we need to look out for in the mountains. Um, it brings the temperature down. It makes it arduous to walk um, up high on the ridges. And you need to be planning your route very carefully if you see those isobars close together. If they're further apart, like let's say that there's just, you can just see two isobars covering the UK and it's like real high pressure there's gonna be no wind. And the millibars are the numbers, they're just calculating the amount of pressure. Anything above 1,013 millibars is going into high pressure. Anything below 1,013 millibars is going into low pressure. So how does the low and the high pressure work? Well, if you're looking at the contours of bars, what it's showing you is the movement of air. So if you've got low pressure, the air is moving anti-clockwise on the map. If you've got high pressure, it's moving clockwise on the map. Well, that's all to do with air temperature. Warm air is really quite light and rises. It's a low pressure. So that's showing that the, the, the pressure's low and the air is rising. That's gonna create clouds and it's gonna create rain. Now, high pressure is where the atmospheric pressure is pushing down onto the earth. That pushes all the the wet, warm air out of the way. With high pressure, cold air, you get quite a clear sky. It's a bit like if you were to fill a sponge up with water. When the sponge is full and it's, it's at its biggest, that's what low pressure is, a sponge full of water. And then if you put your hand on top of it and you push the put pressure onto the sponge, all the water disperses out of the sponge. There's no room for the water to live in, to be in the sponge anymore. The weather fronts, the symbols, and what they represent. There were four symbols that show you what kind of front is coming through. 
and then there's an extra one on there so there's actually five so the extra one is actually just like a black line and that's showing you turbulent air with turbulent air a lot of the time comes um rain comes heavy clouds when you're on an airplane that's when you it's it's an updraft of air so when you're on an airplane that's what makes the the airplane wobble the next one we're going to look at is a stationary front a stationary front is where you've got warm front and a cold front meeting and pushing against each other. It depends whether you've got high or low pressure as to what this front's going to bring. But there's going to be clouds and there's more than likely going to be rain. It can bring snow, it can bring hail and it can bring thunder and lightning. So a warm front is the symbol with a red line and some half sort of sun or moon shapes coming off it, half circles coming off it. Warm front is warm air. It usually comes with low pressure. Um, warm air is, it rises and it's quite light, um, which brings, a, which is low pressure. So you get this build up of moisture in the air because it's warm, it's, it's pulling the moisture up. Um, with, war with a warm front, you would usually get the wispy cirrus clouds first. Then you get the cumulus clouds. They're like the fluffy cotton wool looking things. Then you get the stratus clouds. They look like a blanket. They can be quite low or they can appear quite high. They look like a blanket of gray cloud. And then you get the nimbo stratus. It kind of looks like it's trying to reach down to the earth. Uh, it can sometimes look like a big wall of cloud and generally what you're going to get with a warm front is you get this prolonged rainfall that can last sometimes for days. Um, so a cold front is usually following a warm front um, and in front of a warm front. So the reason that w the warm air s it tends to um, start to form quite high as cirrus clouds is because it's the cold air in front of the warm front is actually very dense. It's high pressure, it's very dense, it's, it's pushing down into the Earth's surface. The cold air is so dense that the warm air can't penetrate it. And the cold front, because it's such dense air pushing down to the Earth's surface, it pushes the warm front along. Now what happens is, as the cold front is moving in, what you tend to get is, after the nimbo stratus cloud of the warm front, and the cold's pushing against it, cumulonimbus nimbus cloud can form. And the cumulonimbus nimbus cloud is formed by the cold and the warm air meeting. And that's where you get your thunderstorms. So that's where it makes the, the uh, high up in the air, the ice particles rub together and create friction. And that turns into electrical energy. And that energy then turns, it turns into lightning and you get the loud thunderbolts, loud cracks. After a cumulonimbus cloud, that's the start of, that's the cold front moving in. Once that front has passed, you've then got the cold air, which is high pressure. So that's like, again, the sponge pushing down. So all the water in the air disperses. You might get some very high um, cirrus clouds, and that's literally just um, water vapor in the air that's turned into ice particles. Uh, you might see the odd wispy cloud in the sky, but generally with cold air, a co after a cold front has moved through with a cumulonimbus cloud, you're going to get clear blue skies. So the question that comes up, that came up in my head when I was learning this was, when there's a warm front and low pressure, why is it cold outside? And when there's a cold front and high pressure, why is it really warm? Well, that's because when there's a warm front and low pressure, the clouds are dropping rain and the sun is blocked from us. So it actually feels quite cold to us, but the air is actually warm and that's what's creating the moisture in the air, in the sky. When it's a cold front, obviously all that moisture is dispersed. It's pushed, out, it's pushed away by the pressure and the sun comes out so the sun feels really hot because it's the sun however as if you if the high pressure stays through the night as the sun goes away you're going to feel really cold whereas if 
the clouds stay, if the warm front stays, at night the temperature doesn't actually fluctuate that much. So whenever you see an occluded front on the map, it's like a pink line with a spike and a half circle, a spike and a half circle. An occluded front is where the two cold fronts have joined together. The, the rear cold front has pushed through, pushed the warm air up into the air. It's trapped it up there by meeting up with the cold front that was ahead. And now it's, um, it's got that warm, moist air above us. So whenever you see an occluded front, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to be getting wet and you need your waterproofs. So where can you find these weather forecasts? The one that I've been using today is on the Met Office. Um, you can go and look at the synoptic chart and you can look for, it's maybe three or four days ahead and you can sort of see the, the weather fronts moving. Um, the BBC, you can look on the BBC, there's um, yr.no. Um, the a Norwegian website, um, very accurate. The Mountain Weather Information Service. Uh, this is uh, an important one for you guys in the UK that are going out into the uh, upland areas. There's 10 upland areas on there. It gives you quite an accurate reading of um, what it's actually gonna feel like on the mountains. They also offer a synoptic chart. It's good to cross-reference the two, so look at the description and look at the synoptic chart. Anyway guys, that is it for this tutorial on the synoptic chart. I hope this um, I hope this supports you to be able to read the weather better. Um, if you have any questions, if you feel like I haven't covered something, then please um, hit me up in the comments below. Um, feel free to message me on um, Instagram or Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. In my newsletter, I tell you what's going on with Summit and Beyond. I also tell you what's going on in the wider um, outdoors community. It's a place where I will promote meetups and all that good stuff. So I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm starting to get cold right now because it's high pressure, clear skies, and it is nearly 8 p.m. at night. So I'm heading inside in a bit.